invite others to join in moving forward in an atmosphere of understanding, dignity, and respect towards reconciliation. Thank you for joining us today. We realize that the experience of meeting virtually doesn't offer the same ability to greet each other or to catch up and socialize. I certainly look forward to having the opportunity again when it's healthy and possible to do so. In the meantime, we hope this new format will give you the opportunity to hear about the work of United Way Halifax over the past year and learn more about our priorities in the year ahead. If you do have any questions or would like to further discuss anything you hear today, I would encourage you to reach out to the United Way Halifax staff team. They have been diligently working since the COVID-19 pandemic began and are only a phone call, email, Zoom, or physically distanced meeting away. Speaking of the United Way Halifax team, I would be remiss if I didn't pass along the board's sincere gratitude and appreciation to Sarah and her incredible team. While their commitment and dedication to making our community better has always been evident, their work, especially in the early days of the pandemic, has been truly inspiring. While overcoming unprecedented challenges, they worked with community, business, and government leaders to raise much needed funding. At the same time, they assessed more than 200 applications to ensure that those who were most impacted received assistance. Work that might normally take several months to organize and complete was done in a little over 90 days. As a result, organizations throughout HRM were able to provide safe shelter, healthy meals, and connections to those who needed the most. Thank you so much, Sarah and team. This AGM is also different because usually we use this time to report back on the previous year. Normally that would happen in May or June, but I think all of us will agree that 2020 has been a year like no other. So we will report back in 2019, but you'll also hear us talk about this year, about the journey we're on so far and what we're anticipating in the future. With that, I want to run through a few technology guidelines before we begin. We are using Zoom webinar to host this event. Your microphone and camera have been automatically turned off for the duration of the event to support our stream. If you would like to ask a question, please type it into the chat box. There will be a few votes throughout the meeting and speakers will provide instructions each time. To move a motion, please type your name and last name into the chat box. The first person to submit will be selected and the second person to type will serve as seconder for the motion. Once we have a mover and a seconder, we will use the Zoom polls option to vote. The poll will automatically appear on your screen when it is time to vote. In each case, you may vote in favor or opposed or to abstain, and you will be provided 30 seconds or so, perhaps a minute to vote. Now I am pleased to officially call the 94th Annual General Meeting to order. We will start with formal business. As required in bylaw number one, article 403, Notice that this meeting was published in the Chronicle Herald on August 24th, 2020. I can report that quorum required for the annual meeting has been met. The agenda for today's meeting, the minutes of last year's general meeting, a report from the Governance Committee bylaws, and the 2019 financial statements containing the consolidated statements of revenue and expenditures and balance sheet have been available on our website. To access these documents, please go to the United Way Halifax website, scroll down the page to the events section, and click on Annual General Meeting. The complete set of meetings is available online. Com complete set of minutes is available online. The 93rd Annual General Meeting of the United Way Halifax was held on June 12, 2019 at the Dartmouth North Food Center. During the business portion of the meeting, the consolidated financial statements were approved by members and auditors Grant Thornton were appointed. We also welcomed four new members to our board, Dorothy Hache, Kenny Hilaire, Catherine Tector, and Jennifer Angel. At the same time, we thanked and said goodbye to board members April Howe, Jean-Michel Blay, Wyatt White, and Belinda Smith. Belinda received the Hella Cooper Award for longstanding volunteer commitment. The NSGEU was recognized with the Community Spirit Award and the Downtown Dartmouth Business Commission received the Partnership Award. The new Evelyn Barkhouse Long Service Award was also introduced and was awarded to Beverly Cadham and Margaret Murray. The board acknowledged some of the challenges facing United Way Halifax and the entire philanthropic, se philanthropic sector 
and spoke to increase collaboration amongst the United Ways in Atlantic Canada. That concludes the summary of the 93rd annual AGM minute meetings. We do require approval uh, of the minutes as circulated. Please feel free to move or vote on motions if you are a resident of the Halifax Regional Municipality or the Municipality of East Hans and believe in the vision and the mission of this United Way. If you wish to move or second, please type your first and last name into the chat box. The motion is that the meeting minutes of the 93rd Annual General Meeting be approved. So I'm waiting for somebody to move the motion. We have a mover and do we have a seconder? We have a seconder. So the poll, the poll is now available on your screen. Please submit your vote. Great, the motion's been carried. Thank you, everyone. And now I'd like to provide my chair report. Over the past few years, the change of pace at United Way Halifax has been a topic at our AGM. We have been focused on diversifying revenue and advancing our work in community in new ways, planning for ways to digitally transform our organization and making sure we evolve and adapt to be responsive, visionary, and relevant to the needs of our donors and supporters. We are also striving to be an inclusive and equitable organization. Our staff and board are committed to critical self-reflection as individuals and as an institution. Through education and dedicated work, we will continue to examine the impact of our thinking, behavior, and actions. We all have a role in addressing systemic racism and marginalization. And Sarah will have more to say about this, uh, this work in her remarks. Last year, we also increased our measurement efforts so we can better understand and describe the impact our work and investments are having in communities. We've also been working more closely with other United Ways in Atlantic Canada, looking for ways we could be even more effective together. That's a lot of change in a relatively short period of time. And little did we know that the first half of 2020 would cause us to take all that work and experience and adapt it to be used quickly and immediately. The COVID-19 pandemic highlighted many of the inequities we have already known about and cared deeply about addressing. Poverty, food insecurity, homelessness, marginalization and isolation were already issues identified in building poverty solutions. We've been working to address them through the programs we fund in community, community partnerships and our own work. Suddenly though, these issues were magnified and the programs that helped address them needed very different supports and they also needed to be addressed immediately. Early in the pandemic, before we had any idea of how it would impact our region, we heard people say, we're all in this together. This sentiment was evident with United Way's Atlantic Compassion Fund, which was the very first COVID-19 response fund created in Canada. As I mentioned earlier, the team adapted quickly. It was all hands on deck to build the fund criteria, inspire donors to join the effort, process donations, evaluate funding applications and opportunities focused on serving the most marginalized in our communities and disperse funding as quickly as possible. The team made up not only of our own staff, but those from the 10 other Atlantic United Ways was truly united. The Atlantic Compassion Fund was an opportunity to really test how we could work together. We were able to serve our own local communities while pooling resources and relying on each other's strengths to make giving to the fund as seamless as possible. It created a much different experience for some of our donors, especially those with an Atlantic wide reach who could see one gift benefit many communities. We look forward to building on the lessons learned and working more with our Atlantic partners. The business community whose plans for 2020 were disrupted overnight, stepped up to help almost immediately. Corporate leaders, foundations and employee donors demonstrated their compassion and understanding of the issues facing vulnerable Atlantic Canadians by partnering with others to make meaningful investments, getting creative in their fundraising, and making other resources available to the charitable sector. The effort was truly collaborative and truly impressive. Our hope is their experiences of working with the United Way will remain a source of pride of how we can help each other, especially when we come together to create more positive impact together. 
Individuals in the community also showed their compassion through giving, offering to volunteer, showing kindness to neighbors and frontline workers, and collaborating to make sure others weren't left behind. We saw many new, don new donors giving to the Atlantic Compassion Fund, who we welcome to the United Way family. I hope some of you are here today eager to learn more about how your gift to United Way helps power a whole network of supports. We also saw incredible support from both the provincial and federal, level, level, uh, federal levels of government. When they needed a trusted partner to deliver, to deliver much needed assistance, they chose United Way. The Atlantic Compassion Fund helped us build on the trusted relationships we developed in the community sector over, th over the years, and it's helped us meet new people and organizations we've never interacted with before. The result is a diverse list of community organizations that we're now working with. Working with some of these organizations has meant we've been able to reach areas of the community we haven't reached before. It also means there is considerable listening and learning that will happen to ensure we nourish and grow all of our relationships in the future. As we look ahead to the remainder of 2020, we realize there will be more uncertainty in many of the spaces we find ourselves in. Partners of the business community are struggling to recover. We know that could impact our fundraising results going forward. Should there be another wave of COVID-19, we know that will create even greater uncertainty amongst the charitable sector. While the sector has proven to be reliable and resilient, we have to acknowledge we are facing significant and costly challenges to maintain service to vulnerable residents. Within this context, United Way Halifax will persevere, continue to focus on the needs in our community. We have been serving our community for nearly 100 years, and we are confident we'll continue to do so for many generations going forward. We're committed to adapting to, uh, to, uh, to commit, we're committed to continue to adapt and change and use what we've learned to deliver on our mission, impacting the community for better. Thank you so much for being on this journey with us. Your trust in United Way Halifax is something we cherish and will continue to work to earn. Your loyalty, generosity, and genuine care to positively impact the issues and people in Halifax unite us all in compassion. I now like to call on Osa Cashin to bring forward the uh, Governance Committee report. Osa. Thank you, Craig. Um, as Chair of Governance, um, I would first like to begin by acknowledging the members of the Governance Committee uh, who I have worked so closely with over the last year. So they include Mike Christie, Laura Godso, and Craig Thompson. Uh, I also want to say tremendous thanks to Lucy Halford and Sarah Napier. So they have been just outstanding in their support of our committee's work and, and we're just, I never leave a committee meeting not impressed by, by the leadership that they bring to the organization. So my governance report today is focused on two pieces. So the first is related to board membership and the second is related to bylaw change. So I will begin with board membership and I'm really excited to introduce six people who are all community leaders, uh, who I, I'm so excited about what, what I hope they'll bring to the board and they're nominated to serve on the board of directors for three years. Um, so, they all have so many, there's so many things I can tell you about each of them. So bear with me while I sing their praises for a little while. Uh, Jane Fraser. So Jane Fraser, CPA, she holds a position of CFO and director uh, for Halifax Regional Municipality. So Jane's key role at HRM is to provide strategic leadership and stewardship of the finance, asset management, information, communications, technology, business unit while advancing council's priority outcomes and administrative priority areas. Jane is a career professional civil servant. She has over 30 years of experience in both provincial and municipal government. She spent 25 years with the Nova Scotia provincial government holding a variety of positions in the Department of Finance, Treasury and Policy Board, Municipal Finance Corporation, Municipal Affairs. Jane concluded her provincial career uh, in the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure Renewal. In 2012, Jane joined the Halifax Regional Municipality and initially she was in the role of Director of Planning and Infrastructure. Jane's education background is in finance, uh, but she's also cultivated a wide breadth of experience in operations and service, uh, really due to significant opportunities she's had both at the provincial and the municipal level. 
She holds an undergraduate degree in commerce from St. Mary's, a chartered professional accountant designation, as well as a master public admin from Dalhousie. Um, and she's also served on the Property Valuation Services Corporation Board. She's an executive board member of the National Executive Forum of Public Property. And she's a board member of the Nova Scotia Association of Municipal Administrators and the HRM Pension Committee. So Jane brings tremendous experience. Uh, Suzanne Fougere. So with two decades of experience, Suzanne is a senior strategist and award-winning marketer with a proven ability to conceive and deliver solutions that support organizational growth. Her diverse experience spans practice areas of business and revenue development, stakeholder and shareholder relations, marketing and brand strategy, and strategic planning. She has advised clients, senior executives, government officials, and boards in all facets of business strategy. Suzanne first joined Events East in 2010 with an emphasis on the new convention center, where she's played a critical role in ensuring the project's overall success through to the opening of the facility in 2018. She works closely with the president and CEO and the board of directors to deliver on events East long-term vision for the focus on partnership community and industry engagement and the overall alignment of their strategy across all business areas. She's also at the executive lead for Scotia Bank Center's corporate partnerships and revenue development. Suzanne's a graduate of Mount St. Vincent University's public relations program. She holds a certificate in marketing um, and she was the recipient of the inaugural Canadian Public Relations Society, Nova Scotia Communicator of the Year Award. Suzanne has previously served on the board of directors of Fusion Halifax, the organizing committee for the Blue Nose Marathon, uh, the engagement committee for the ECMAs in 2018, and the board of directors of Kids Up Front Atlantic. Most recently, she was the chair of marketing for the host organizing committee for the 2020 Women's World Hockey Championships, and she's the chair of the It's Our Time Female Leadership Summit. So Bradley Day. Bradley Day is the co-founder and co-CEO of both Placemaker 4G Cluster Employment, and he's a founding member of ACCE Nonprofit. P4G is the new generation of recruitment in Atlantic Canada. Bradley is a community leader, a sports enthusiast, and a member of the African Nova Scotian community with a deeply rooted history in Nova Scotia. Those roots are what keeps him grounded and provide the motivation behind the work he does now. As the grandson of Delmore Buddy Day, community development is always at the top of Bradley's mind. He's an empathetic leader with a successful background in professional sports and business development, and he continues to give back through youth football in the north end of Halifax where everything started for him. Through his community and business involvement, he's established a strong network of community members and leaders and has the knowledge and experience to evaluate and address community needs. The three values Bradley lives by are compassion, community, and love, and his stated purpose in life is to connect communities through building trust. Laura Godso. Laura is the executive recruiter for Dalhousie University, where she's responsible for the recruitment of senior level academic and administrative leadership positions across the university. As a member of the university's senior human resources team, she also provides counsel and advice on onboarding, performance management, and professional development. Laura is uh, anti-racist and a feminist and continuously works to employ those lenses in her human resources practice and in her volunteer work. Prior to joining Dalhousie, Laura was a partner in the executive search practice of Knightsbridge, Robertson, Surratt, and also served as the firm's diversity and inclusion lead providing counsel and advice to clients across the public and private sector. Laura holds a Bachelor of Arts Honours from Mount Allison University and both a Master's and PhD from York University, where, she's a recipient, where she was a recipient of a Shirk Fellowship for her research into historic issues of equity, gender, and race. She's a Canadian Certified Inclusion Professional through the Canadian Centre for Diversity and Inclusion. Captain Sean Williams. Captain Williams grew up in Bedford, Nova Scotia and joined the Canadian Armed Forces in 1997. After graduating from the Royal Military College with a degree in mechanical engineering and completing his initial phase training, he joined his first ship, HMCS Regina in 2002. During his time in Regina, he was deployed to the Arabian Sea as part of Operation Apollo and achieved his head of department qualifications. He would later serve in NCSM Ville de Quebec as a Marine Systems Engineer Officer, during which time the ship was deployed to the Mediterranean Sea as part of a NATO task force. 
and or task group and was then retasked to support world food programs off the east coast of Africa. Captain William has also performed numerous staff roles in National Defense Headquarters, including serving as Auxiliary Vessel Class Manager and Fleet Management Senior Staff Officer in DGMEPM, as a Naval Technical Officer Career Manager, Canadian Surface Combatant Senior Supportability Engineering Manager, that's a title, and most recently as Executive Assistant to the Chief of the Defense Staff. A graduate of the Joint Command and Staff Program, Captain William holds a Master of Engineering from the University of Ottawa and a Master of Defense Studies from the Royal Military College of Canada. He was promoted to his current rank and was appointed as a commander of the Canadian Forces Base Halifax in 2020. Nicole Johnson Morrison. Nicole Johnson Morrison is the President and Chief Executive Officer of EduNova Cooperative Limited. She's passionate about leading the organization toward achieving its goals of supporting and growing international education in Nova Scotia in support of provincial diversification and economic goals. Nicole brings a wealth of experience working with Provincial Crown Corporation, Nova Scotia Business Inc. and SBI, where she served as Manager of Trade Market Intelligence and Senior Trade Executive. In her four years at NSBI, Nicole was instrumental in leading policy initiatives and strategic directions to grow opportunities for businesses within Atlantic Canada. Prior to joining NSBI, she served at the federal government level as, as a senior trade commissioner with Global Affairs Canada for 10 years, where she successfully led Canada's regional trade policy and international trade efforts. During her time with Global Affairs, Nicole was also responsible for growing Canada's educational promotion efforts internationally and was a delivery partner for the College and Institute Canada in the region. In 2012, she was recognized with the Global Affairs Transformation Chain Champion Award and a United Nations Women in Business Award. Nicole holds both a Bachelor of Science in Economics and an MBA from the University of Leicester and is currently a doctoral candidate. She holds postgraduate degrees in management and marketing. She's a certified project management professional by the Institution for Commercial Management in the UK and a certified international trade professional through Concordia University. Nicole serves as a board member with multiple organizations, including the Black Business Initiative, where she's the chair of the BBI's Diversity Employment Network. Nicole is also a member of the Women's Business Forum with Elevate International, as well as the National Congress of Black Canadians. So those are our six nominees. The process for proposing additional nominees to the board is outlined in bylaw number one, article 5.04b. Uh, no further nominations have been made. So I'd like to put forward the following motion that uh, the proposed slate of directors be appointed to the United Way Halifax Board of Directors for a three year term. So if somebody wants to move or second a motion, please. Oh, we, that is moved by Max Chauvin, seconded by Monica Foster. So the online voting has begun. I'm just waiting for a notice that the motion or that the voting has concluded. And that motion is carried. So there are five members retiring from the board this year. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry to see them all go. We have just a terrific board of directors at, Hel at the United Way Halifax. Uh, the five members retiring from the board this year are Monica Foster, Claudette Porter, Patrick O'Regan, Dave Mazur, and Melissa Marsman. Uh, they will be recognized later in the program. The Governance Committee will propose the following officers at the board meeting later this month. Uh, Craig Thompson as chair, Dale Noseworthy as chair of the Audit and Finance Committee, Victoria Jollymore as chair of the Community Impact Committee, um, myself, Osa Katchen, as chair of the Governance Committee, 
and Jennifer Angel is chair of the Strategic Fundraising Cabinet. So I'll now move on to the second part of my, um, my role today, and that is to address the bylaw changes. So those of you who've looked at the accompanying material to the will have had an opportunity to review the bylaws. The bylaws were last revised in 2018, and uh, the board is recommending the following amendments to the bylaws. So I will walk through these amendments. Um, in item 1.05, we will remove mention of honorary member of the corporation. The United Way does not have a definition for honorary member of the, of the organization and couldn't identify an instance when this wording uh, would be required. So we have removed that provision, um, or we are proposing removal of that provision. Uh, 203, um, changing the fiscal year end from December 31st to March 31st. This aligns with the financial policy changes approved by the board in June 2020. Um, under item 2.04, we will remove the reference to vice chair and, and replace that and add the chair of the Audit, Finance and Risk Committee. This better aligns with our current practices uh, for the execution of instruments. Under item 4.03a, we uh, are updating the method of notice for the annual general meeting. So United Way Halifax is able to connect and promote the AGM with donors, partners, and community through electronic methods. Um, under 5.01a, uh, we're updating the list of officers the board appoints to align with current practice. 5.02, we are setting a maximum number of members for the board of directors, and this will ensure that the size of the board is appropriate for the size of the organization. Under 5.05C, we're removing the item in accordance with the United Way Centre Canada's policy. And under 6.05, we are adding in stipulations regarding electronic voting to ensure that there's a clearer procedure. Uh, we have also made some minor edits and a shift from his, her, and he, she pronouns to they, them to make sure that the language in our bylaws is inclusive. So I'd now like to put forth the following motion that the bylaw changes articulated in the governance report be accepted by the membership. And I'll call for a mover and a... All right, so Kenny Hillier, is has stepped forward to move. I will now call for a seconder. Laura Whitman has stepped forward as a seconder. Thank you, Laura. All right, I will now call the motion. Thank you, everyone. That motion has passed. And that's it for me. Hello, everyone. I am here to um, present for the Audit, Finance and Risk Committee. Um, pleased to present this report uh, to the, on behalf of the United Way Board of Directors. I'd like to thank the members of the Audit, Finance and Risk Committee who served during 2019, including Craig Thompson, Kent Lane, Patrick O'Regan, and Claudette Porter. I also extend appreciation to our auditors, Grant Thornton, and to Katrina Beach and Allison Butcher. We're very impressed with the value United Way Halifax receives from Grant Thornton's high quality advisory services. 
A complete set of the audited financial statements are available online via the United Health Way Health Act website. You can obtain, also can obtain them by contacting the United Way Halifax office located at 46 Portland Street in Dartmouth. The auditors note that the financial statements present fairly the financial position of the organization according to generally accepted accounting principles. As is customary for not-for-profit organizations, the auditors qualify their opinion related to the completeness and timing of fundraising revenue. I will summarize the results for 2019 briefly. Net funding revenue was 4.34 million in 2019, down from 5.05 million in 2018. The decrease in revenue is due primarily to certain national corporate partners shifting the way they approach their employee giving campaigns. The United Way Halifax quickly shifted, uh, reacted quickly to this change to make sure the community felt as little impact to this change as possible. Fundraising expenses were 1.04 million in 2019, down from 1.57 million in 2018. Savings were achieved as staff success successfully implemented a series of initiatives to increase efficiencies and reduce costs. Examples of these initiatives include revisions to several internal operational practices, reviewed and renegotiated contracts with service providers, and efficiently working with a smaller staff team than in recent years. I'm pleased to report that the United Way Halifax's total support to the community last year totaled 3,670,000, mil, sorry, 3.67 million. And this includes United Way Halifax direct investment in third party agency programs of 1.15 million, which was up 13,000 from 2018. Also included is 1.19 million invested in community impact initiatives in the areas of poverty, housing and homelessness and inclusion. This is a 20% increase than 980,000 invested in 2018. Other distributions include designations donors asked us to pass on to other charities, follow um, fun funding we provided to neighborhood initiatives and 211 Nova Scotia. All these investments contribute to important areas of support and positive change in our community. The results of the United Way Tomorrow Fund, an endowment fund governed by its own board of trustees are consolidated in the financial statements on page five of the financial statements. Overall, the net results of our revenues and expense operations in 2019 was a small deficit of $4,000. The balance sheet can be found on page four of the financial statements. The balance sheet consolidates the segregated funds of the organization, including the general fund and the tomorrow fund, along with our reserve for future operations. The December 31, 2019 balance of our segregated funds were as follows. The general fund was $694,000. The tomorrow fund was $3,098,000. And the reserve for future operations was $434,000. In conclusion, I would like to report that the Board of Directors approved the 2019 audited financial statements at a board meeting on April 21st, 2020. I would now like to put forward the following motion that the audit and finance report be adopted as presented. So I'll make a call for a mover. And a reminder to type, you type your name in um, if you'd like to move or second the motion. And it looks like, oh, Jennifer Angel has um, given the first uh, and the second by, um, oh, I missed who the second was, but I'm sure we have it on record there. Um, and uh, now if I ask everyone to vote. And I can see that the motion carried. Before we move to the appointment of the auditors, I wanna share two financial policy updates that United Way Halifax will be implementing in 2020. 
In June 2020, the United Way Halifax Board approved a switch in the fiscal year uh, from December 31st to March 31st, with, uh, which OSA um, just reviewed. But this change will create more alignment between our accounting practices and our fundraising and planning activities. The second policy change is a move from pledge-based accounting to cash-based accounting for donations. This will help strengthen our expense management and donor accountability even further. Both these changes will improve the usability of our annual financial statements and support operational decision making. I would now like to put forward the following motion, that the firm of Grant Thornton be appointed as auditors for the United Way Halifax for 2020, including for the year ended March 31st, 2021. So a call for movers. I see Kent Lane has uh, Move that and a seconder, um, Manel Soleil. So um, now look for uh, the vote on that. And I can see that that motion carried. Thank you very much. I would now like to ask Sarah Napier to share an update on United Way Halifax operations. Thank you, Dale. And good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being with us virtually today. We are certainly grateful for all you do for United Way and our community, including your commitment to be present with us today as we report on last year and look forward to the months ahead. Thank you so much as well for your time, your donations, your passions, and your trust. You as our donors and stakeholders and partners fuel everything that we do at United Way. So we hope that you are proud and inspired by your contributions. And on behalf of United Way Halifax, our staff, board, and all of the organizations and people we serve, I can really ne never possibly thank you enough. If we were all together in person for this AGM, we'd be sharing a printed annual report with you with photos and stories of the last year. We'd also be sharing a highlights from the campaign and our community impact work and of course our financial statements. While you won't be able to hold our report in our hands in your hands this year, we have created an entirely digital annual report. It is easy to find on our recently updated website unitedwayhalifax.ca. And you'll see that it's easier to spread the word about the work of United Way Halifax. Each separate story in the annual report has a link at the bottom of the page that you can click so you can share it on social media, uh, the network of your choice or via email. It also allows us to include video so the report is more interactive, which we hope helps enrich the stories we've chosen to tell this year. And most importantly, we hope the report's content represents much of the community work we've all contributed to and in turn helps bring us all together. As you will see, United by Compassion is the underlying theme of this digital annual report and this AGM because in the past year we've seen many examples of people showing their compassion in this community. And this compassion can come to life in so many different ways. For example, many are using compassion to advocate for social change. Others are donating to a meaningful cause or volunteering for a community project. And so many more are simply sharing time, conversation and kindness with a new friend in need. The pandemic has heightened the need for such compassion tenfold and in many ways not always, but in many ways, is bringing out the best in us. As Craig Thompson mentioned, our board chair, when we look back at 2019 at our organizational changes and advancements, so much of what we were doing, even if we didn't fully anticipate it at the time, was preparing us to respond for COVID-19. As United Way Halifax, a board and staff, over the past year, we have been focusing on community partnerships, expanding our funding framework for community, 
expanding our work on our public voice on issues that matter, strengthening relationships and community with all levels of government and with sectors of business. And we've also been working collaboratively and deliberately with our 10 United Way partners across Atlantic Canada. I'm really proud of the work that has happened in the past year and of the team that has made all of that work happen. And these foundations that have been our focus have helped us work nimbly and effectively in a COVID-19 context to impact the community for the better. And progress in this work will become even more important as we all acknowledge our ways of working will be forever changed by the impact of COVID-19. This pace of change and adaptability has also been demonstrated very clearly within our funded programs and the funded programs specifically that we support. During the time of the pandemic, we've seen many programs and organizations change and adapt with exceptional effort and care to keep serving their clients, their members, their residents, communities and individuals experiencing marginalization and stress. It is so inspiring to see this level of ingenuity and, and as the circumstances around us are all so uncertain, the certainty of compassion in our community is heartening and something in which all of us can find strength. Even though the pandemic has led to generosity and compassion in many ways, as well as incredible adaptability and resiliency in the nonprofit sector, it has also amplified many of the issues present in our community. Issues that we as United Way Halifax remain committed to address. And one of those issues that we've been focused on during the pandemic and otherwise in the past year is isolation. We all miss seeing friends, family and colleagues like we are accustomed to. Many still have the ability to connect virtually so we don't miss out on birthdays and baby, baby showers and other social gatherings. But others have been experiencing social isolation long before the pandemic. Poverty, disabilities, mental illness and language are all barriers to connecting with others. Our efforts through the Atlantic Compassion Fund, which Craig Thompson reported on a few moments ago, helped with many issues, including isolation. As one example, the fund allowed us to purchase phones or laptops, tablets or online platform subscriptions to connect people differently to important supports at a time when isolation became even more critical. Addressing isolation was also an important goal when we launched our brand new Neighborhood Kitchen Fund in late 2019. We recognized that one way to bridge socialization um, and gaps, pardon me, is through good food and community. When people come together over food, they're able to build friendships, share nutrition and resources, and learn from one another. And this really exciting initiative has been made possible thanks to BMO and MetaV, who each invested $300,000 to bring the Neighborhood Kitchen Fund to life. This fund will bring that feeling of coming together over food to neighborhood hubs who are already working to address food insecurity and social isolation in the community. The fund will help them build, renovate or update kitchens and dining spaces, purchase new appliances and equipment, and even purchase things such as dishes and serving tools. We know that 2020 hasn't been the ideal year to, so far to launch a fund that brings people together, but we did learn that these are important issues that we need to address in community. So I anticipate that there will be more to share about the activation of this fund later this year. And thank you again to BMO and Medivy for, for their vision to make that happen. Linked to social isolation and food security is the umbrella issue that United Way is focused on. And that's doing our part with partners to create a poverty-free Halifax. Overall, 14% of residents in, of Halifax experience poverty or living below the low income, low income cutoff while in some neighborhoods, rates of poverty increase to 50% of residents. This means that many individuals struggle with meeting even basic needs due to low income, experience housing insecurity or homelessness, and also consistently live with the extreme stresses 
of living on the edges of poverty. United Way Halifax continues to play a role funding programs, working on partnerships, research and policy efforts to create positive change in this regard. And the needs have become even more acute in the context of COVID-19. We will continue to keep the conversations going. So we as a society learn lessons from this time and invest in and advocate for long overdue social inequities. We also know that racialized populations, particularly Black, African Nova Scotian, and Indigenous communities are disproportionately and unjustly impacted by poverty and by social crises, including most recently the COVID-19 pandemic. Over the past many months, United Way has built on work that we started last year to improve our diversity and inclusion practices to address racism and marginalization more directly. Last year, in 2019, we started our staff's cultural humility plan to better understand the historical injustices and systemic inequities caused by anti-Black and anti-Indigenous indigenous racism. The experiences that were shared by Black and Indigenous members at that time highlighted the many injustices in the institutions of our city, province, and country. And this includes our own organization. As events in the United States and Canada in 2020 have drawn more attention and needed attention to racism, it gave us another opportunity to reflect on our work and ensure we are equitable and anti-racist in our practices. Like many organizations, we carefully drafted an anti-Black racism statement that all of us will stand up for. But a statement is nothing without action behind it. We are making more efforts to reach out to racialized communities and to take marginalization into consideration even more when reviewing funding applications. We're in the process of improving diversity, our equity and inclusion policy, and setting employment and strategic volunteer equity goals. We're also implementing programs to improve the diversity, knowledge, and cultural humility of our team. We are very genuinely committed to increasing the depth and breadth of equity, diversity, and inclusion in every element of our work within our organization and in the community. Through all of this, we will continue to listen and learn from marginalized communities to ensure that we're always serving their best interests in close collaboration with them and not for them. As we look forward to 2020-21, I know we will continue to look back on our learnings we will continue to build on our work with the other Atlantic United Ways, build on new and old relationships we have with community agencies and partners. We will continue to diversify our fundraising revenue, deliver on our expanded funding framework for community and continue to be driven by our mission. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the exact phrasing of our mission, I'd like to read it aloud. United Way brings people together, including donors, volunteers, and partners to create lasting social change. We do so by investing leadership, time, and funds towards critical community-based programming, partnerships, and sector capacity building, and by doing all we can by bringing our voice and influence to issues that matter most. This mission will guide us and focus us and we are certainly energized by the opportunity to do more together in the months and years ahead. Thank you again for joining us online today and for being such generous and amazing donors and friends. I really do wish we could be meeting in person, but I do encourage you to reach out to me or anyone on the United Way Halifax staff team, an amazing team, which I have the privilege of working with every day if you have any questions or feedback on what you've heard today. Before we proceed and get to the recognition part of our agenda, I'd like to share with you one of our brand new videos. This video is a first in a series that we'll be sharing and adding to our website in the coming weeks. At a time of year when many of our partners and donors are engaging with us and considering their capacity to give, 
We hope these video stories will plant seeds of hope and possibility and help you imagine and feel the difference you are making in our community when you support United Way. My heart sunk thinking about the reality of so many young people who are currently living and honestly stuck in unsupportive home spaces. We know statistically that isolation is fatal for queer people. So the Youth Project is a space to serve youth under 25 that identify as part of the 2S LGBTQIA plus community uh, and to create vibrant, creative, innovative programs, resources and education spaces and social spaces for them to connect. We realized that we had to move online because we needed to cultivate community space somewhere. Youth are incredible and adaptive, and they were just so easy to readjust. We are really just the facilitators and holders of the space, and the young people are doing that connective work. We are so lucky to be supported by United Way in relation to their community fund. This work is really critical and life-changing for a lot of young people. I challenge folks to reflect on the spaces that they feel safe and valued and think about if everybody feels safe and valued in those spaces. When you support United Way, what you're doing is supporting a myriad of beautiful and diverse communities. Connection has always been at the heart of our work and for a very long time and that connection has never been more important. In this spirit, I'll ask Board Chair Craig Thompson to return to the podium to speak about our 2020 award recipients, all people and organizations that embody connection and the other values of importance to United Way. Thank you, Sarah. Wonderful video. I can tell you firsthand that serving on the United Way Halifax Board of Directors is a rewarding and meaningful experience. And I'm very grateful to the full board for their commitment and engagement. Today, I'm pleased to highlight the work and leadership of our retiring board members, Monica Foster, Foster Melissa Marsman, Patrick O'Regan, Dave Mazur, and Claudette Porter. These individuals have provided time, support, and expertise to the organization over the course of several years, and we are very grateful for their contributions. Monica Foster has been involved with United Way for close to 20 years and has served on various communities, various committees, and the board for six of those years. In addition to committee roles, Monica served as chair of the Audit and Finance Committee, and most recently as chair of the board from 2017 to 2019. Melissa Marsman joined the board three years ago and has provided great support through her role on the board and in her role as vice chair of the Community Impact Committee. In addition to her governance roles, Melissa also actively supported the United Way campaign at Dalhousie University. Patrick O'Regan has served on the board for six years and lent his guidance and expertise to our audit, finance, and risk committee, committee for much of that time. In addition, Patrick was an active participant in our strategic planning group in 2016 and has been available to provide advice and support as needed throughout the years. He has also been an active champion of United Way within Oregon, Oregon's automotive group, and we are grateful for this important community support. Dave Mazur joined the United Way Halifax board two years ago in his role as base commander at CFB Halifax. Dave has been an enthusiastic champion for United Way serving as co-chair of the strategic fundraising campaign and supporting the Government of Canada workplace campaign at the base, including rallying great support and volunteerism for many events, including the Big Harbor Swim back in 2018. Claudette Porter has also served on the board for six years. In that time, she contributed to various policy development pieces regarding risk and governance, 
served in the Audit, Finance, and Risk Committee, and served as chair of that committee from 2017 to 2018. Clyda has contributed her drive and enthusiasm for United Way Halifax at AMIRA, including co-chairing their internal fundraising camp campaign to great success. A big thank you to Monica, Melissa, Patrick, Dave, and Claudette. You will all be missed on the board and your legacy of contributions will always be appreciated. We also know we'll find ways to keep you connected to the United Way family. We will now move to the awards portion of the agenda. Typically, we present these awards in person and allow an opportunity for in-person in congratulations and photos. This year, we're pleased to announce our reward recipients at the AGM and will deliver the awards in person and hopefully take a physically distanced photo following the event. Our first award is the Community Spirit Award. Every year, we award this to pay tribute to extraordinary commitment to our community made by an individual or an organization. This can include an outstanding contribution of time and our money or towards community enrichment overall. This year's award winner is Tom Rose and his family and his business, Atlantic Business Interiors for their extraordinary generosity and leadership in the development of the Atlantic Compassion Fund. When COVID-19 restrictions started quickly setting in amongst the Atlantic provinces, there was considerable anxiety and worry knowing that people living in poverty would be even more vulnerable. Tom quickly stepped up and inspired the creation of a new Atlantic wide fund that would help offset the impacts of COVID-19 on our most vulnerable residents. Atlantic Business Interiors donated 100,000 in office furniture to support the community and the nonprofit sector and their ability to work remotely and adapt working conditions. But he wasn't done. In addition, Tom matched dollar for dollar the first $100,000 of contributions made by individuals and businesses across the Atlantic region. As well, Maria Rose, the owner of Steve Arena's Cappuccino in Halifax, joined these efforts by donating $10,000 and coffee and baked goods to service providers. The Atlantic Compassion Fund was launched on March 17, 2020, and to date has raised over $10 million. It's important to note the Atlantic Compassion Fund was the first COVID response fund established in Canada. Thanks to Tom and team, the East Coast once again leads the way in generosity and compassion. This work has had an impact for those most vulnerable in our communities at a time when that help was needed the most. An achievement that would not have been possible without the leadership of Tom, Maria, and ABI. Their generosity allowed the United Ways and Atlantic Canada to meet, in need, meet immediate needs of the most marginalized in community, such as providing access to food, medicine, transportation, and mental health support. It also allowed for support outreach to seniors in vulnerable populations, including grocery and supply deliveries, safety check-ins, and community interventions. As a result of ABI and the Rose family's generosity and the donations their gifts inspired, United Ways and Atlantic Canada were able to support approximately 400 charities. In HRM alone, we funded 80 agencies with just over 23,000 people benefiting from the Atlantic Compassion Fund uh, funding in the community alone. Tom, on behalf of the organization, thank you for demonstrating your, your community spirit during a difficult time for our community and our region. Thank you so much. Our next award is the Partnership Award. This award goes to an organization or organizations that have demonstrated commitment and support to United Way Halifax and have found creative and supportive ways to partner with us. This year, we are recognizing two organizations, BMO and MetaV, for their co-creation of the United Way Halifax Kitchen Fund. Publicly announced on December 5th, 2019, the Neighborhood Kitchen Fund will allow neighborhood hubs to upgrade or replace appliances, renovate or upgrade kitchens and gathering spaces. They could even use it to purchase new equipment or supplies. The fund will improve kitchen and gathering spaces so that community members can enjoy good food and connection in a friendly and welcoming atmosphere. BMO stepped up as the initial investor of this important fund and MetaV quickly followed, matching their um, $300,000 contribution. This partnership demonstrates the unique funding opportunities that can be developed through United Way with the leadership and support of corporate and community partners. We know that good food can be a tool for building community, improving well-being, and reducing poverty. 
We also know that the needs around access to food are only increasing and have been exacerbated by the impacts of COVID-19. More details on this fund will be announced in the fall. In the meantime, thank you to BMO and Medivy for your partnership. This fund allows us to bring people back together when the timing is right. I'm now pleased to present the Evelyn Barcos Long Service Award. Evelyn Barcos was United Way's longtime Chief Operating Officer, and the team wanted to mark her contributions in a meaningful way following her retirement in 2018. Working in the nonprofit sector often requires long days, multiple demands, sound leadership, and work in areas of finance, human resources, and communications, and often all in the same day. This award recognize, recognizes and honors the passion, dedication, and loyalty of a long-serving staff member of the United Way Halifax-funded agency. This year, we are pleased to present the award to Trina Fraser. Trina is the longtime executive director of the East Preston Daycare Center. The East Preston Daycare and Family Resource Center is a nonprofit organization that has been in the community of East Preston for over 40 years. Their main goal is to nurture and support families in the region and they support and they provide a supportive family feeling to their programming. Trina's unmovable dedication to the children, families in the community of East Preston is undeniable. Many of the United Way staff have highlighted Trina's welcoming nature and her eagerness to share stories, discuss impact, and speak proudly of the team at the East Preston Daycare Center. This commitment to the organization and community is clearly demonstrated in the East Preston The Seven video, which addresses the challenges of getting around East Preston actively and safely and shows the impact of these challenges on her community. Most recently during the COVID-19 lockdown, one of the first calls to United Way was from Trina. She wanted to ask staff if any help was required and let us know that she and the East Preston Daycare Center were available to help. In the following days, staff received a call looking for volunteers to help cook meals to fill freezers. Trina took our call and despite all she and the agency staff were doing to support the oral community, immediately said yes. Thank you for your leadership and dedication, Trina. And on behalf of United Way Halifax, congratulations on this much deserved honor. On to our last award. Over the past number of years, we have recognized a member of the United Way Halifax community with the Helen Cooper Award. Helen Cooper was a volunteer who was active on our board of directors in the 1950s. She represented the Maritime School of Social Work. In addition, she was the coordinator of the Door to Door campaign in the 1950s. Her commitment to community inspired United Way Halifax to honor her memory by presenting an award for long serving volunteer commitment. Today, we are pleased to present this award to Monica Foster. For over two decades, Monica has served in numerous volunteer roles for United Way Halifax, playing a pivotal role in our work to address the issues of poverty, housing, and isolation in neighborhoods across HRM, making our communities stronger, healthier, and more prosperous. Monica has served on numerous United Way Halifax committees, including governance, community impact, the fundraising cabinet, cabinet premises, and audit and finance, where she served as chair of the committee for three years. Most recently, Monica served as chair of the board during a critical moment in United Way Halifax's change journey. She guided our organization through significant changes in community investment, supporting the Poverty Solutions Report in our efforts to diversify revenue and the recognition of United Way Halifax's connection to the Halifax explosion through our 100th anniversary and the Wake Up Halifax event. Monica's leadership, unshakable positivity and conviction has helped make millions of investments in the community possible. Monica has also been a tremendous supporter of United Way Halifax in her own workplace at the Nova Scotia Community College. Monica has led their workplace campaign for years and through a series of fun and effective on-campus activities, secured significant support and donations. While Monica's time on the United Way Halifax board has concluded, she has joined the United Way Halifax Tomorrow Fund Board of Trustees, which oversees our endowment fund. This new role demonstrates Monica's ongoing commitment to the organization and our work in the community. Through each of these positions, Monica's keen financial eye, thoughtful stewardship and dedication to the mission 
helped build United Way Halifax's critical change-making capacity and helped transition the organization into a social impact leader. Monica has consistently brought the same energy, passion, and can-do attitude that was ever present in her earliest, earliest volunteer roles on the United Way Halifax's management teams and campaign groups to these roles. Her gregarious nature, approachable demeanor, and willingness to take on any task has set an example and a bar for which we all strive to achieve. Congratulations, Monica, and thank you so much. I'll now invite Sarah to present the staff awards. Sarah. Thank you, Craig. United Way Halifax recognizes staff after five, 10, and 15 years, et cetera, years of service. This year, we have two employees who are celebrating 20 years with United Way Halifax, Roxanne Millington and Sue LaPierre. First, I'd like to talk about Roxanne. Roxanne, as I've mentioned, is celebrating 20 years with United Way. For 10 years, Roxanne served as a member of the campaign team, and for the past 10 years, she has served as a data management assistant as a part of our finance and technology team. Roxanne ensures donations are captured in an accurate and timely fashion and support, and she also manages our designation and receiving processes. This year, Roxanne has also supported the organization by conducting service contract reviews and lending additional support to our community impact teams as we are processing funding applications and approvals through the Atlantic Compassion Fund. It's hard to applause via this uh, type of meeting, but I'm sure we're all, we're all clapping as we did with the awards that Craig read and for the staff awards, but a round of applause certainly is, is deserved for Roxanne. So congratulations, Roxanne. Sue LaPierre. Sue uh, serves as our direct, Director of Community Impact at United Way Halifax. Over the past 20 years, she has worked in a few different roles on the Community Impact team and first came to United Way after working for a funded agency. In her role, Sue oversees United Way's community impact work, including our investment in agencies and partnerships and our work in housing, neighborhoods, and poverty. Sue's passion for community is boundless. Each day she demonstrates unflinching care and compassion for our city's most vulnerable and gives 110% or more to what she cares about and believes in. And we're grateful for that. Earlier this year, Sue and her team guided the organization through four tiers of funding review and approvals through the Atlantic Compassion Fund. And this is a tremendous amount of work, uh, but Sue's dedication, leadership and commitment helped steer us through. So thank you, Sue, for your commitment to United Way Halifax and our community and congratulations and another round of virtual applause. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to proceed with a couple of other thank yous while I have the mic. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the full staff team and the board of United Way Halifax. And Craig spoke about staff and his gratitude for staff and, and the, the board and all of the contributions that everyone makes. And I'm very grateful for his words on that subject. And I wanted to include a few of my own. First, to the board, including our chair, Craig Thompson. Thank you so much for your leadership, your genuine commitment, and the insights that you provide so frequently and with, with, uh, with great uh, inspiration all year long. It is an honor to work with you and all of your contributions and expertise are of incredible value to United Way Halifax. So on behalf of the United Way Halifax team and the community, thank you to our full board and including officers, including also of course our chair, Craig. To the staff team, I feel very grateful and fortunate to work with a group of exceptionally talented, genuine, caring, and dedicated individuals. We have been through a substantial amount of change over the past few years, and even more so in the past few months. And through it all, the team has continued to live our values of respect, trust, compassion, adaptability, and collaboration. So from my heart to yours, thank you for all 
thank you very much for all, all of you, for who you are and for what you do for this community. And now I'll call on Craig uh, to conclude our meeting. Thank you, Sarah. Before we close out, I just want to thank everyone again for joining us. While we're not able to gather in person and connect socially, I would encourage you to reach out to any member of the United Way Halifax staff team to ask questions and learn more about our work over the past year, and perhaps more importantly, heading into the remainder of 2020 and 2020 and 2021. Contact information, including phone and email, is listed on the recently updated United Way Halifax website. So thank you everyone for joining. Take care. Oh, I need a motion to adjourn, <laughs> but I don't need a seconder. So do we have somebody to motion? It? Do we? Okay, good. Motion carried. Thank you, everyone.